So the advertising industry knows full well what it's doing and how to most effectively sell their product to you. In fact, they spend billions of dollars every year to psychologically manipulate you into buying their product. And they do it with military precision. Here's an example. Procter Gamble spent $13.6 billion in 2011 in advertising. And L'Oreal spent almost $5 billion. And General Motors topped it off with $3.5 billion. So if you think about it, if we're not truly affected by what we watch or hear, these companies wouldn't spend billions of dollars. Just to give you an idea of how much money this really is, LA Times in 2008 wrote an article on how to solve world hunger. Within this article, they wrote that the price of hunger was estimated at $30 billion per year to solve the world hunger problem. The t TV advertising works, it works really well, and we're spending millions of dollars on it to promote, ironically, an online brand. But advertising is not all just about money. They're there to sell you a set of ideas with those products. You see, marketers understand something. They understand that the key to marketing is your emotional attachment. For us, the art of marketing is about creating emotional responses. And I mean, that's the whole idea of art, right? It's why you go to a museum. It's why art, art influences, inspires us. And applying that to marketing is something we've always thought you know, very heavily about. It's about bringing design, um, bringing emotion and creativity and passion. I mean, you can play this game with yourself. Just say Coca-Cola or Ford or Boeing, just name anything like that. And you, and then start ticking off what you associate with it. Right. There'll be a whole bunch of attributes and those attributes are created in advertising. They're created by the product itself. They're created by the experience you have if you call the company with a problem or no problem. Any interaction you have with that product, company, thing that it makes, service, the, the cumulative effect, the cumulative impression you have is the brand. How you feel about a certain product, how it feels in your hand, how you feel when you wear those clothes or whatever they're selling you is exactly what marketers are going for. But advertising is the art of the intelligent generalization, okay? It's not supposed to be a tech sheet. It's supposed to get across the gestalt, the, the, the essence of the idea. It's supposed to turn you onto an idea of the product and what your relationship is gonna be with this product or service, not all the specifics. Who in this room has ever bought something they didn't really need? Yeah? Okay, some people have got two hands up. Um, so you're standing in front of it, you're going, I don't need it, can't afford it, it's not practical, and you walk out with it. Why? Because of the emotion it makes you feel to buy it. My favourite business writer, and I'm sure some of you share this, is a guy called Tom Peters. Now, I, I was reading an interview he did with an executive from Harley Davidson. So he's interviewing their top executive. And he said, halfway through the interview, yeah, but you just sell motorbikes. And the executive said, Tom, you have missed the point. He said, we don't sell motorbikes. And Tom Peters says, well, what do you sell? He said, we sell the ability for a 43-year-old accountant to dress in black leather, drive through a small country town, and have people be afraid of him. <laughs> he said, we sell an emotion. We sell a feeling. He said if you use logic to buy a motorbike, you'd buy a Japanese one because they're awesome. Notice the key word is feeling, your emotional attachment to them. How society became an emotionally driven market really began in the 1920s with Sigmund Freud's nephew, Edward Bernays. Eddie Bernays saw the way to sell product was not to sell it to your intellect that you ought to buy an automobile but that you will feel better about it if you have this automobile. I think he originated that idea that they weren't just purchasing something, but they were engaging themselves emotionally or personally in the product or service. That it's not, you, you think you need a new piece of clothing, but you'll feel better with the piece of clothing. That was his contribution in a very real sense. We see it all over the place today, but I think he originated the idea of the emotional connect to a product or service. He was almost single-handedly responsible for the way our modern society shifted from a needs-based society to a wants-based society. He took his uncle's writings about human desire and applied them to the masses. You see, at this time, American corporations enjoyed a massive boom in production because of the war, and goods poured off the production lines. But what they feared was a danger of overproduction. There would be a point where people had enough goods and would simply stop buying. 
Goods had been marketed to the masses on the basis of need and function. Things like shoes, stockings, and cars were promoted in functionable terms for their durability. What the corporations realized they had to do was to transform the way that the majority of Americans thought about the products. One leading Wall Street banker, Paul Mazur of Lehman's Brothers, was clear about what was necessary. He said, we must shift America from a needs to a desires culture. People must be trained to desire and to want things even before the old had been entirely consumed. We must shape a new mentality in America. Man's desires must overshadow his needs. Prior to that time, there was no American consumer. There was the American worker, and there was the American owner, and they manufactured, and they saved, and they ate what they had to, and the people shopped for what they needed. And while the very rich may have bought things they didn't need, most people did not. And Mazur envisioned a break with that, where you would have things that you didn't actually need, but you wanted, as opposed to needed. You see, the way advertising works is by creating a void in your self-worth that only the product or service can fill. Men are sold the idea that looking cool is actually better than functionality. And in the same way, women are sold the idea that external beauty is paramount over personality and character. The most glaring example of this can be seen inside the beauty industry. The Dove Corporation recognizes this and has created an entire campaign exposing the onslaught of advertising focused on external beauty. This particular commercial shows what a young girl sees in magazines, on mannequins, and in advertisements, which will ultimately have a significant impact upon her self-worth. This industry has mastered the art of lying about true beauty, and the only way to have it is to utilize their products. Dove ends the commercial with wise advice. Talk to your daughter before the beauty industry does. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you guys liked that clip. It came from a documentary called Pseudology. If you want to purchase this documentary, you can get it from littlelightstudios.tv. We've got some more clips from this documentary. You guys can check them out over here. You can also rent it on Vimeo. If you want to subscribe to our channel, hit that little subscription button and you'll be notified when new videos come out. And also, if you want to help support our work, Patreon's a great way to do that. You can help us continue to put videos like this out. We hope to see you guys soon. See you.